right, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I have some arrowheads. I've always wanted to see what happens if I put these in hydrofluoric acid. This is the scary stuff that dissolves glass. These are a glass-like material, so it should dissolve them. The question is, what's going to happen as it's dissolving? Will it reveal any kind of interesting patterns, or will it just dissolve it kind of smoothly? What about the sharp edge? Will that be blunted by the acid, or will it get even sharper? I don't know. So today, we're going to find out. Now don't worry, these are not antiques. They were made very recently using traditional techniques by my friend Joseph from Good and Basic. I have a few different kinds. So this is black obsidian. You can see the light does not go through it very well. It's actually a snowflake black. I have another piece of it here with the snowflakes there. I will try to dissolve a piece of this to see what it does to the actual you know, the snowflake portions. This is a green obsidian, which lets a lot more light through, as you can see. This one is made out of flint, and this one is made out of agate. You see the agate lets a lot of light through and the flint uh, not very much maybe a little on the edge there when it's thin so let me uh, set up and, uh, and we'll see what happens when we put them in acid okay so this acid is able to dissolve glass metal ceramics flesh but it is powerless against plastic which is why Everything I'm using here is made out of plastic. I've also got this tub full of lime to catch any drips and neutralize the acid. Any vapors I produce should be pulled away by the fan you can hear running. Let's just uh, transfer some of this into these soda cups, soda bottle cups. Yes. Plastic, of course, holds up to the acid much better than any glass beaker would. <laughs> okay. I'm actually going to dilute the acid about 50% with distilled water. So let's make an acid about 20% concentration. I'm mostly doing that to save acid and to make the dissolution more efficient. Just so I don't have to use quite as much. I'm already using quite a lot. Okay. also kind of rinse out my beaker there. Now for the obsidian. So this is the snowflake. Kind of looks like eyes. No, don't lower me in the acid. No, not the acid. Oh, no, 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 no. raise the level just a little bit there. Perfect. Okay. Oops. It's not great. That's what gloves are for. The other two in. Okay. 
Let's let those sit. It's already lightning in color. So it's been about four hours. I've come out to have a check on it. And the flint has dissolved a significant amount. You see it's come off the nylon string there. The solution's changed color. There's a little bit of sediment there. Interesting. The oh, it just came off the string. Yep. This one's looking a lot rounder. These don't look all that different. So it's the next morning, about nine hours since I put them in the acid. You can see it definitely has affected them. These two especially are much dissolved. Yeah, that, that arrowhead's looking a lot rounder and smaller. That one's still hanging on though. Let's uh, pull them out. Get a better look at them. My scheme to pull them out with a string clearly did not work. So I'm going to use some chopsticks. See if I can grab hold of the little piece of agate that's left. There we are. There's something there. I'm going to dip it in some lime water to neutralize the acid. Now it can safely be handled. Let's get the rest of them out. Oh, that one's still on the string. That's interesting, it's got crystals growing on it. Let's have a look at the solutions that are remaining. You see the one that had the flint has got some reddish brown sediment to the bottom. I'm guessing that's mostly calcium fluoride with a little bit of iron staining. Stuff that isn't dissolved by the acid. The agate has similar, but the sediment in this one, as you can barely see, is basically pure white doesn't have that iron in it. That's really the difference between agate and flint. Agate is a uh, more clear. But chemically they're basically the same. They're both made of chalcedony. And these two, you can see the solutions are a little bit dark. Maybe, maybe even greenish. Greenish gray. There's not much in the way of sediment but the solutions are kind of cloudy. I don't know how well that 
shows up on the camera. But there it is. And I'll just uh, dispose of this acid. What I'm gonna do is just react it with lime water, make calcium fluoride, which maybe I'll use as a flux later. In fact, I've, in fact, I've got a bucket right here just for that. So here we are. I've washed the acid and the fluorosilicate crystals off of them. You can see that they are definitely changed. See, here's some pieces that didn't go through the acid. You can see there's quite a difference. The obsidian is now dull. It's not shiny anymore. The flint is a lighter color, also dissolved away significantly. Same with the agate. I think the outer material that's on this, I think that's calcium fluoride. I think there's, I think there's more calcium in these than there is in the obsidian, except for the snowflakes. You see the, the eyes here? There's some of that white material here, which looks like calcium fluoride. So there must be calcium in the snowflakes. Now you'll notice that the obsidian arrow point didn't get as small as the flint or the agate arrow points did, even though they started at about the same size. And I think the reason for that is not that the obsidian's any harder to dissolve, but that there was just more obsidian there for the acid to work on, because I had this other piece in there with it, so it kind of acted as a shield to protect it a little bit. But also the obsidian, it seemed to have gotten thinner. See, it dissolved in from the flat sides more than it did from the edges. Or maybe it did the same, but you know, it's more noticeable on the flat side. And the result of that is it's now much thinner. You see, light passes through it more easily. And it's a lot sharper than it was. I, well, it, it certainly didn't dull it. See, look at that. It cuts the paper perfectly. And actually this other obsidian kind of did something similar. If we look at the edge here, oh well you can see that maybe if we get a magnifying lens here. You can see the edge, it's all one edge now and it's very sharp. Whereas the arrow point didn't go through the acid, the edge is kind of, it's still sharp but it's sharp in many places. It's more of a serration. You can see that the result is you know, it's able to cut through the paper a lot better than it did before. So this is the one that didn't go through the acid. See, it, it can't cut the paper at all, except for maybe at the very edge. <laughs> So the acid does sharpen it significantly. And while we're looking at this with the magnifying lens, let's see if I can get that back on there. You can see the, ah, it's not working. The snowflakes have like a halo around them kind of a portion that is like different than the rest of the obsidian. And also the obsidian seems to have lines in it now, like styrations. You see it most predominantly in this one. Now, I think that might be one of the reasons, maybe along with the snowflakes, that this type of obsidian was much harder to nap. I remember him telling me that it wasn't working very well. You know, this stuff was going much better. So, yeah, it was much more difficult to nap, probably because of these defects, which we can now see. You can also see that there's little pock marks. You can see it a lot better in this one. Places where the obsidian dissolved more easily. So there is a pattern that was developed. It's kind of neat. This one, the, the pox are smaller. 
but more crater-like, I guess. Almost looks like the surface of the moon a little bit. And of course, the freshly broken obsidian that didn't go through the acid is completely smooth and glassy. So anyway, uh, the flint piece, you can see, it doesn't really have those. It dissolves more smoothly, I guess. More like it just shrunk down. The other chalcedony, it seems to have had some like veins going through it. See there? Places where it was more difficult to dissolve. Anyway, so there we have it. That's what happens when you put an arrowhead in hydrochloric acid. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.